it's a great pleasure today to be talking to Jane Prescott, who is the president of the Girls' Schools Association. And uh, Jane, what a year this has been. And how are leaders in girls' schools faring at the moment? Well, I think they're faring remarkably well. Uh, I think there's, um, if we look at the examples of countries that have done very well through this pandemic and have perhaps responded to it well, if you can look at it in those terms, then if we transport that to girls' schools, and I'm not talking about just female leaders here, I'm talking about our male colleagues too, I think that the attributes that a girls' schools have lend themselves to coping with this in the best way we possibly can. How would you so explore that a bit more? What, what, what does that mean? What, what does that look well, like? Well, I think we're quite collaborative. Mm -hmm. um, some of those skills that um, girls, women naturally have about working in teams, mm -hmm. um, being kind to one another. And I'm not saying that boys are not, but our establishments, we are kinder on the environment for a start off. That is very much uh, a, a fact. But we're also, I think, like I say, into teamwork, into collaborative working. It's those slightly softer skills. Mm -hmm. uh, we're good talkers, we listen. And I think that's helping um, us get through this terrible time that we're all living through. And it is, it's absolutely awful. It's awful on the, the pupils as well as it is on the adults in the school environment. I mean, how have you seen the pupils coping with, with what's been going on? Well, I think that, I mean, like, children are incredibly resilient, as yes, you will they are. well yeah. know. Yeah. And I think that they adapt much mm -hmm. more readily than we give them credit for. Mm -hmm. I get a bit annoyed when everybody refers to the sort of snowflake generation who melt at the first opportunity. Nobody has had this happen to them previously. And I think when you consider that, then they're doing remarkably well. What I'm seeing in my own school is certainly um, we're missing that whole school togetherness. Yes. Mm -hmm. So your year sevens are not getting that experience of being able to see those older girls and mm -hmm. how they behave and um, the added value that they give to a school. And year seven still think they're in their primary school almost because they're not seeing those older ones because they're being kept in their bubbles and they're being kept away. And so they're missing out on that experience, which makes them possibly a little wilder. That's what my head of, seven, <laughs> head of year seven says. Um, uh, but, you know, they, they've adapted to the rules and regulations. They're washing hands, they're sanitizing. They're very sensible about masks. They're not, um, they're, they're trying to keep away from one another. Girls do like to hug. And so that's a little bit trickier perhaps. Uh, so we're, we're seeing that they're coping really, really well considering the environment they're in. And a lot of them have coped with bereavement, which they haven't had previously, you know, grandparents, or even if they're not close relatives, their neighbors, their people that they know, uh, people within their community who perhaps died sooner than they would have anticipated. And that's been quite tough. And they've not been able to draw on support like you might do from the wider family. And so that can be a bit isolating. So considering all of that, I think they're doing remarkably well. Mm -hmm. Do you see potentially uh, there's like a generation of female leaders to emerge from this? That's what I'm hearing through this. Yes. Yeah. I, I would wholeheartedly agree with that because they are witnessing what is happening around the world and how certain leaders are responding or coping with that. And they have therefore examples of how they might um, do it differently. But then even within our own school community, they're seeing how, say, my head girl team have responded to everything going online, house music, house drama, their charity events, and how they're not letting that get them down. They're still coping with it. We're still raising money for our charities that we would normally do and getting involved, even if it is a little bit more distantly. Mm. And what do you see as the challenges moving forward as the short term, medium term, long term even for not just your school, but girls' schools in general, or schools in general? I think whereas we're quite used to talking about the future further away, the three-year, the five-year, and schools were terrible planners 
or good planners. So we plan for next academic year, the yeah. academic year after that. It's very difficult for us to plan at the moment, and that is certainly a challenge. We don't know if we're going to be playing hockey next term. We don't even know if we'll play hockey next week. Well, perhaps we won't be playing hockey next week. Um, and that's a change from three weeks ago. So it, whatever plans you put in place, you're always having to adapt and change, and it's a forever shifting sand. So I think it's difficult for us to look much more long-termly. You know, when will school trips be um up and running again like we used to have we've actually got a sixth form trip to the theater tonight oh gosh <laughs> yes which is you know we were really pleased to be able to put that on they were very very keen to go and of course it's still going ahead because the increase in lockdown doesn't happen till tomorrow yes, yes. um imagine and, the risk assessment for that <laughs> <laughs> and um you know we would normally have been to the theater several times already this term so they're already having a different experience mm. but uh, I, you know at the end of the day we're all we're all planning as best as we can but I think mm. it is difficult I think it is a challenge for us I mean we, we, I've already I've interviewed for a replacement bursar I, I'm interviewing this week for two assistant heads in our prep school and we've got used to doing it online seeing lessons online meeting these people online and um it you know it seems to be successful and that seems to be going well that's a complete change but i planned these interviews this week to be in school so planning is really difficult i think it sounds like that what you're saying when i was going to ask you what are the opportunities that are arising from this and i'm hearing from that uh, issues about resilience and perhaps a change in how education and how uh, happens in schools and how how operations happen in school. I mean, is that something that you're seeing not just in your school but across the sector? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we all had to bring ourselves up to speed with online learning mm -hmm. almost overnight. And as a head teacher, I always feel you you might gain other skills, but you definitely become less skilled at the day to day technical side of uh, perhaps being a teacher. And so people in my position had to very quickly upskill in that I now understand Teams and Zoom and all the other ways in which you might communicate with people. And that's happened times 10 to the children in our schools yes. because they have had to um, adapt to different ways in which they learn. Um, and the fact that several of them have different types of devices. So somebody might be using something that's um, more word based or uh, more of an Apple based or, you know, there's completely different operating systems. And yet they've all got to submit the same work, as it were. So I think that they, they, they I, I keep writing about this, actually, we've, we've created a generation who will understand what working from home means and yes. all of the pros and cons of that, that they will be much uh, more readily uh, upskilled to do meetings online, communicate with uh, other workers in the rest of the world. They'll understand that much, much better than certainly my generation did, but even the generations younger than me, they haven't had that experience where, you know, currently they know what it, the problem are when five of you are all on your home Wi-Fi uh, <laughs> and it, it can't quite cope with that amount of streaming. And, and, and I say the practicalities of working from home, how you make sure you don't overwork. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, if I were to ask you about the independent school sector in, in general, and I'd say, you know, what is it that's special about it? You know, what would you say, partly in this, the situation in which we're in at the moment, but, but also more generally, what does it bring to society and to the world? I don't want this to sound like it's a comparison to the maintained sectors, mm -hmm. because there are some very, very good schools out there. So I'm just saying what I find is um, perhaps excellent in the independent sector. And maybe this pandemic has brought it a little bit more to the fore in that our schools are pretty well resourced. Mm. So we are able to adapt and change. We are able to provide our teaching staff with the resources that they need quickly. Mm -hmm. And to be fair to our staff, they're willing and able because they understand that they are in a market 
exactly. And that they must respond if the school is to survive. Mm -hmm. And so they're on your side, as it were. Whereas I think perhaps in other establishments, it's not so easy to get everybody on board for that common aim, which is to provide an excellent ed education. It's not the same, but as near as you can get it, even if it's from home, even if it's hybrid, even if it's a mixture. So I think that's certainly um, something that we offer. And we've kept our activities going. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which often is as a result because we have coaches who provide that or teaching staff for whom it is part of their day to day and part of their teaching load. So we're able to offer that too. Um, and I think it is the face-to-face -face teaching at home, mm. which we've been able to so successfully deliver mm. that certainly my exam years that came back in this September, the 11s and the 13s were further ahead than they normally are just because of the intensity yes. of online learning. Yeah, that's been a huge advantage, hasn't it? I mean, a huge um, boon that the, the independent schools have been able to do. I mean, in a sense, I suppose, facilitating the determination of teachers to, to, to make that happen. It comes through the resourcing. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. And, and it's having um, enough people, human resources, mm -hmm as well to help those that are delivering the online learning so it is your IT support mm -hmm. who I mean ours were absolutely amazing about ringing individual families who were having trouble accessing the platform that we were using or whatever it was and as we all know a lot of the time it is user error rather than technical error but these people were doing it for the first time as well and they needed that support and we're able to put that in yes. we're able to be able to offer them that level of um, help so that everybody is accessing what they need to. I mean, we phoned every girl every week uh, throughout lockdown. So they had a tutor call. Even the little ones did, albeit that you were mostly talking to mum um, or dad or you know a member of the family but they still had that contact because we were worried at first about mental health and we were worried about how they were coping and were they accessing the materials um and that reassured us that they were and they could ask us at that they could ask somebody that they were familiar with their tutor and that's another thing they've learned Young people tend to be a bit nervous about talking to adults on the phone or in this situation. They have become completely comfortable with that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's an amazing life skill. And to be able to have and learn the art of chat. Yes. yes. You know, so they are able to spend 20 minutes talking to their form tutor that they might not have done previously yeah. online. Yes. So if I were to ask you, and you had a if you had a crystal ball and you were to look into the future. You know, five years into the future, say, and and look at what independent schools will be, girls' schools, independent schools more generally. What do you think they will look like in five years' time? Well, as I said, looking to the future is you know difficult at the moment. We're almost only able to do to the end of term, but I think we'll be stronger mm -hmm. um, because whilst we don't want to capitalize on any situation or, or be smug about anything, I think what it has shown is that more resourcing needs to go into the maintained sector in order for them to be able to deliver what the independent sector can do. Uh, and that should be a lesson to those that make the decisions about resourcing and finances and so on in our maintained sector colleague schools. And therefore, as a result, I think we, we, will, we will be in a stronger position. Education matters. Yes, it does. And I think um, it's brought back to the fore for families how important education is. Yeah. And whilst they might have been thinking, shall we, shan't we, they might plumb for deciding to spend the money to be think it's worth the investment mm. because of its reliability and the continuity mm. of it. Um, and that's a shame for those families who can't afford it. Mm. But the sector is doing a huge amount of work, isn't it, to, to make it affordable as many people. Uh, definitely, definitely. And perhaps some of the um, 
things that have happened through the pandemic, some of the savings that we have made mm. will make that possible. And it's things like um, we're not having the hospitality we normally do. And it makes you question some of those practices. Do we actually need to be spending this money there? Could we reduce the fee, make it more uh, available to more people if we can make um, cuts in, in different places? Um, because we're still delivering an outstanding education without necessarily the frills that sometimes go with an independent school. Mm -hmm. That sounds like which, a fantastic game, yes. Which has, I think, we all know and we all recognise there has been an arms race for facilities in independent schools in recent years, mm -hmm. uh, as we compete with each other for the same market. Mm -hmm. it, perhaps that's made us stop and think a little bit about where the priorities really lie mm -hmm. and will enable us, therefore, then to keep our fees at a steady level in order to be able to offer it to a, a far greater range of uh, people, of schools. We, of course, do work in partnership with our local maintained schools too. And um, that has only got better, I think, in, in lockdown, actually, where we're able to offer resources and so on that we might have that they would benefit from. We're all in this together, after all. Yes, we are. Yes, yes. Well, Jane, look, thank you so much uh, between us, with, maybe there's this crystal ball, we'll come up with something, but I have this thing we're actually going to shape the future with the girls in, in your school and girls in, in other schools across the country. Yeah, I think so. Yes. So thank you so much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me.